Now, today's guest is best known for her divine dancing, fabulous frocks and excitable energy on Strictly Come Dancing. But Motsi Mabuse has had one heck of a life story behind those sequins. Joining us from her home in Germany. Hello, Motsi. Hi, hi, hi. hi. It's gorgeous to have you on the show. Listen, it's interesting, isn't it? We all see you looking fabulous on a Saturday night and success looks very easily come by when we just watch it on the TV. But there is something about about your life where, you know, you look so confident in your own skin. That is all hard fought for, isn't it? Tell us about your time in South Africa and what being, uh, you know, under segregation was really like, because we can't believe it looking at you that you've had that <laughs> life really. You know, I have to be honest, I, you, you just showed a uh, picture of me as a little girl and I just had to suppress the tears oh, because wow. I still feel like now when we speak about this subject that everything keeps coming back from somewhere probably that we hid right back mm -hmm. because I would say it wasn't an easy childhood. Um, our parents did the utmost that we felt loved, that we had everything we needed, but we, ne we knew in what kind of atmosphere we were growing up in, especially since our parents sent us to a school outside where we lived, meaning that we went to a school where we were in the middle of the whole kind of um, apartheid and racism, and we had to learn to fight. So if you look at that little girl there, that picture you just showed, and she had to learn from the onset that she had to fight, that this is going to be a really tough, tough life that she's going to live. And you never felt anything is fair unless you honestly succeed in absolutely everything you did. That means if I was running, I had to run to try to be the best. If I was in the school concert, I wanted to be in the front row because this is the kind of mentality we grow up with. And um, you toughen up. But I think as a little girl, that this was not an easy life. And being in the dancing world must mm. have been even more extreme for you. Just explain a little bit about the differences between you and your white friends, about how your life was and how dancing became, you know, something that you fought for as well. You know, when we came in, in the dance world, uh, everything was separate in South Africa. So we had competitions where only black kids dance and only white kids. So my parents were always like, come on, let's go in there. So we went in to these competitions without any kind of experience. We just came like little kids, let's dance a competition. And there were moments that you could feel that it doesn't matter how well you danced, that that would never be acknowledged. Because from the onset, it was quite clear who is supposed to win this competition and it was never fair. And um, we had to fight. And I have to say, which nobody believes, the first time I came overseas, I landed in London. I went to the dance studio and I started dancing. And all these, like all these dancers, they were like, wow. And I'm like, what do you mean, wow? <laughs> because everything that wasn't celebrated in South Africa was in London, felt like I, I was put on some sort of pedestal. And I'm like, what is going on here? Aww. And I, yeah, and I felt uh, with 17, the first time, like, wow, I'm worth something. Um, because I don't know, you kind of wait for that acknowledgement, even if it's not healthy, but you want to hear from other people, listen, what you're doing is good. And um, yeah, that's why I came back. <laughs> Motsi, Motsi can, I, can I ask you, because um, I just found reading about your life so fascinating. But one of the things that really, really choked me was this line where you put, you know, in South Africa, black dancers had to pancake their shoes. Can yes. you tell us what that meant? Well, it meant the dance shoe uh, came in like uh, just a neutral white color. And as the time progresses, of course, they changed the colors, but there was never a dance shoe for us. Mm -hmm. And um, so that was the thing that we knew. We had this kind of brown uh, little dye that you could buy, and then you had to prepare your shoes um, on your own. And a few years ago, before I stopped dancing, I met a company also from UK. It's it's Ray Rose, and they said, we'd like to sponsor you. And I was like, well, thank you. I'm very happy. And they said, you'd never have to dye your shoes again. Oh, and uh, wow. that meant so much. I mean, that was a, a small gesture for me, but I, it meant so much literally thinking back from where the times that we were sitting there dyeing our shoes and um, 
Now I got my own shoe, yeah. my own color. You've got your own shoes and you're the most fabulous judge on Strictly. We love you and your sister. So tell us how, because there is going to be another series. How's it, how's it, how's it going to change? Are people going to be living together? Well, well, well. <laughs> <laughs> Let's heat it up. <laughs> Well, I have to say, we just had a series in Germany. We finished uh, about four weeks ago, and everybody was disciplined. We did kind of the dancers quarantine in the same hotel, and everybody was very careful to be really restricted from the studio to the hotel. I guess if we want to uh, take care of everyone's health, everyone's health, then we kind of have to stay together, and there should be precautions so we are able to deliver the show I felt personally that at the times, it was the high times of Corona in Germany, people just looked forward to seeing some sort of happiness, some sort of entertainment, get away from everybody. And we took it very seriously to entertain the people. It was tough, it was emotional because you felt like you have to be more than yourself. Uh, but uh, people love the show and it brings so much happiness. Well, we all want it to come back, don't we? Yeah, it brings up do. all our lives. And a bit we of with a, with a lovely dancer might not be a bad thing. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. More clear and glamour. <laughs> I'd say, Monty, we could talk to you forever. Yeah. We don't have the time, unfortunately, but lots of love from all of us. Thank lots you for being here. Thanks, Monty. Thank you so um, much. I have to say, I find that you are so fabulous. It's so great to see you. Oh, Keep on well, going. From you, thank you.